Okay, so in this part we're going to discuss integers. So now we're going to first discuss what an integer is, what kind of values it can take on. So these are going to be positive, negative, or zero whole numbers. And we're going to talk about where we would use ints in the code. We're also going to look at examples of how we would use integers rather than other number types within our code and in real life. Alright, so now we've taken a look at booleans, let's take a look at integers. So what exactly is an integer? Well, if you recall from high school math, integers are numbers that are negative, positive, zero, and must be whole. So this means that they can be greater than zero, less than zero, they can take on zero value, but they cannot be decimal places. So for example, this is an integer, this is an integer, this is an integer, rather that, but this is not an integer, okay? That is a either a float or a double, but that's something for next video. So just to show you what I mean, let's create some variables. Let's call this one first int, and we'll call the type integer. And right away, before I continue, there is a ton, or there are a ton of different options for this. So there's an int, int32, int64, there's a lot of different options for integers. The one we're going to be using is going to be just the regular int, which is this first one. But the others will be seen sometimes depending on what you're doing. So if you're passing data, sometimes you'll need different types of integers or different functions sometimes taking different types of integers. But if we need to do that, it's not really a problem to convert between them. It's, uh, it's actually pretty simple. What we can do is we can do, we have our integer here called first int. We sign it the value of 7, as you see 7 there. If we want to convert this to an int32, for example, that's fine. All we have to do is call the int32 and then put our integer in brackets. So first int there. And now we can see 7, and there's no problems there. Okay, so the conversion is pretty simple. And we can convert a lot of things to uh, back and forth between integers. We can even convert strings to integers, uh, as long as there are numerical values in the string. But that's going to be something for a few videos from now. Okay, just bear in mind that as far as numbers go, the conversion between different types of integers is easy and this is all you have to do. You declare the new type and you put the variable in the brackets. Okay, so just like with booleans, we can reassign values. So let's say first int, give it the value of 20 and it should be fine to take on a new value. This is just rounding up here and yeah, there we go. We see 20 now. So first int contains that value rather than 7 and we'll continue to contain the value 20 unless we reassign it. However, again, with like with booleans, if we create this constant, so con constant int, type int, and we'll give it this value of negative 3, we can't then go and change it constant int to something like, you know, 10. Okay? So just going to wait for this to update. And yeah, see, this is the problem here. We cannot assign a value. Constant int is a constant rather than a variable. So it cannot contain the value of 10. Okay. So just be aware, again, constants, once assigned, have to contain this value. And variables can be reassigned values. Okay. So the next step we're going to do is we are going to take a look at some operators that we can perform or operations rather with that we can perform with integers so because these are numbers we can perform many different operations such as the four basic ones addition subtraction multiplication division I'll show you some examples now let's just create some integers we're going to call this it's going to be of type int let's just give it this value 5 and it's going to be variable a we'll do a variable b of type int and let's give it the value negative negative 15 okay and I just included the semicolon here out of habit uh, in 
Swift 3, the semicolon is not necessary, but in most other languages it is. So whether you choose to include it or not is entirely up to you. However, the benefit would be that you can put more than one thing on one line. So for example, if I put the semicolon there, then I can include this all on one line and it's fine. Otherwise, you know, you don't need to include it. Okay, but let's take a look at some of the operations we can do. So I'm just going to start out with the, with the basic ones. Let's try A plus B. And just waiting for the update. And we get negative 10 print, printed out there because that is the result of 5 plus negative 15. We could do like a, a minus B. So 5 minus negative 15 and we'll get 20. So there's some of that good old math coming back. The double negative turns into a positive. So we get, let's try A times B. And we get a negative 75. And lastly, let's do like a B divided by A. And we get a negative 3. So we know that we can perform these simple operations. There are many other things that we can do, but some of the built-in math functions, such as, for example, the power function, will take in doubles rather than integers. And that's where we need to be careful. So if we're using a lot of the built-in functions, we'll have to convert to a double, but that's easy enough because we can just call double and we can use this type. And we'll just put in the integer that we want to convert and it's A-OK -okay with that. We get no errors and we get the value five there. Okay, so this is a very handy tool, this conversion trick. Uh, basically, if you, as long as it's reasonable, you can convert pretty much anything. Okay, there are going to be some exceptions to that, which I will explain. I mean, for example, you couldn't convert a boolean to an integer because there are no numbers within a true or false statement. Okay, but within numbers, the conversion is pretty easy and straightforward. Now, what if we tried to do a decimal number with an integer. So let's have a variable and we'll just call this C. We haven't seen a variable C before. And we'll give it the type int and we're just going to give it the value of 6.6. .6. And let's see what happens here. We get this error here saying cannot convert type double to int. That's because 6.6 .6 is a double and 6 is an integer and we cannot basically assign a double to an integer. If we assign it 6 that's fine, but if we give it a decimal that's not. However, if we perform some kind of arithmetic like we have this, let's ha say we have an, this int that's equal to 6 and we go c divided by a, so we have a 6 divided by 5 which should be a decimal number. Let's see what happens. We'll wait for it to run. And it's being a little slow. Yeah, there we go. So we get one. Now, this is a little puzzling because we know we should get a decimal number. Six divided by five is not equal to one. It's equal to one point something and 1.2 to be precise. And But we get this one here without the decimals. And that's because we have to represent it as an integer. So the compiler basically just ignores the decimals and assigns it to be this integer value. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. A lot of different languages would actually throw you an error saying it would result in a decimal number and that you cannot do that. But Swift 3 is pretty forgiving. So just bear in mind this will happen if like, you won't get the true value, you'll get just the value without the remainders. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind when you're using operations on integers. Now, let's look at some real life examples. The one I like to use is the example of a character within a video game moving about. So let's say we have a variable position and so type int and we're going to give this a value zero to start off with. And let's create some constants so we can have a constant and we'll call this movement one and this one's going to be type in also it's maybe moving the character forward six spaces got to stop including those semicolons okay and then we have 
maybe another movement, movement 2, and let's type int, and we'll give it like a negative 8 or something. Now, think about a character moving about. Integers are a good way to represent movement because we're not going to have the character take a half step or a third of a step. It's going to be a whole step every time. They're always going to be moving forwards one tile at a time. So we could have, for example, position equals position plus movement one. And we should get the number popping up really soon and we get six. That's because we have the initial position to be zero, and or rather the final position is going to be the equal to the initial position here, which is zero, plus movement one, which is six. So then we assign zero plus six to be the position, which is six. Okay, so then if we were to print out position now, it should contain the value six because we've assigned it a new value up here. And it's just taking a little while to refresh. Well, it does. Yeah, there we go. So we get six there. We can also do something like position equals position plus movement two. And it'll be basically the same thing. It'll take this position, which is now six, and it will add movement two to it, which is a negative eight. So we should end up with a negative two. And there we go. There's our negative two right there. Okay, so this is a good example. Another good example might be something like a health, like a character lives. So, you know, as in some of these games such as Mario, you might start out with three lives and then you get more lives or you lose lives depending on whether you hit stuff or, or collect enough coins. And those are generally integers because they're always going to be whole numbers. So whenever, whenever you know it's going to be a whole number, use an integer because it takes up less memory and is faster to deal with. Whereas if you know it might contain a decimal, best to stick with double with doubles or floats or just convert it to convert your integer to a double or float when needed. Okay, so that just about sums up integers for us. Just do a quick recap. So integers are either positive, negative or zero, but they have to be whole numbers. They cannot contain decimal places. We looked at how to assign one. So we just declare it of type int and give it a numerical value. That's a whole number. We can convert between number types pretty easily just by calling the new type and then putting the variable in the bracket. We looked at reassignment so we reassigned first int to be have the value 20. We also looked at performing some operations with integers such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and we looked at this example of a character moving around and talked about a character's lives. Okay. So that's integers for you. Our next part will look at floats and doubles, which are another way to represent numbers using decimals this time. Okay, so this was our intro into integers. So integers are basically just whole numbers. They can be either positive, negative, or zero. And they're especially good to use when we don't need decimal places. So as long as we know decimal numbers aren't involved, it's a good idea to use integers because they take up a less or less memory. And in these small programs, it's not a big deal but once you get onto the large scale, it can make a difference. Okay, so again, whole numbers only. So we use the example of movement commands for a character in a video game where positive integers, so positive movement commands might be moving up or forwards and negative movements might be back or down. Okay, so next time we're going to be discussing floats in which we'll be able to actually use decimal places.